Come on. Come on, YouTube. I know 10 Outdoors 9's got a, a new ballistics gel test. He'd better have one with a 458 win mag. Come on. Ah, this thing is so slow. Boom! <laughs> hey, Hickok 45 here. Let's get serious. I told you I would eventually show up over on the other channel, Hickok 45 and Son. Uh, and here I am. So it's kind of neat to be able to put something on the shooting table besides a gun. Who knows? Next time we may have a cat, you know, or a spare tire to talk about. So anyway, a little more flexibility over here. I thought maybe uh, two or three of you, you know, might be interested in this old computer and uh, some boring history associated with it and, and myself. So anyway. Yeah, that's an old Macintosh. That's uh, it's not really my first computer. Uh, I started with an Apple IIe in this '81, and I was in uh, in the corporate world, believe it or not, a goofball like me. And I had uh, territory and areas I was keeping up with, and I uh, I uh, studied enough to see that a computer could help me, and I wasn't afraid to jump in. So I got an Apple IIe and managed to. Uh, numbers and uh, learned to use a basic spreadsheet what was it this account at the time and uh, then uh, of course Mac and Apple came out with some things that were easier to use but uh, oh, what was it well Excel yeah the first one I actually spent some big dollars for was I think it was the earliest version I'm thinking Excel perhaps yeah really though which we use today with office right uh, so anyway this is a Mac but but this is the one I bought in 84 uh, so I uh, graduated from the uh, Apple II series to a Mac in 84. And this is the first Mac. That's one reason I thought maybe you'd, you'd find it interesting. This was the first Macintosh. And uh, I was kind of early uh, with it. This thing came out in, I think it was introduced in January by Stephen Jobs of 84. And, uh, and then uh, I bought this. I see. I was in the the publishing world I was in. I was at that point involved with software with this kind of kind of upstart division of this company, publishing company, is an educational publishing. And at that time, it was really uh, it was new stuff. Anything to do with a computer, anybody knew anything about a computer at all, they thought you were a genius. That's what was funny. But uh, you, may, some of you remember those days. Uh, People didn't even know how to use word processing. Didn't know what word processing was, a lot of people still, and everything. So if you could actually turn a computer on and get it to do something in, in the early 80s, he was like, whoa, that guy's smart. You know? <laughs> so, so I got the advantage of falling into that. It was kind of funny. But I, I really got into it as a tool, just like this thing. You know, It's a tool. Uh, it's a lot of fun, too. And these are tools, and they're a lot of fun. This one's not anymore. But... Uh, so anyway, uh, it was an exciting time. I mean, I, I really can't relate to you if you didn't live through it. And even if you did live through those times, if you were not involved in it at all, if it just sort of was going on uh, off your radar. But if uh, I just happened to be, a lot of it was coincidence. And uh, within the publishing world I was in, I just kind of same old dumb me made the, wasn't really a mistake, it was a good move. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll jump into the computer division because I had bought one and was using it. And a lot, most people, I mean, by far, most people had not their own personal computer. So I, was, I knew a little bit about how to use it, a little bit of spreadsheet, word processing, you know, that kind of thing, things you needed to know. And so, uh, I, yeah, I'll do it. So it was just a few of us, a handful, and it was really exciting times. Uh, there wasn't much software out there at the time. All that was going on. It was really interesting. Uh, if you Google those times, uh, you know, the headlines, the articles about the new computers and everything and software programs, it's, it's almost funny to, to read now. But anyway, so uh, the big buzz was about the Macintosh and, of course, Apple. And this company I was with, we attended SoftCon, which was a huge annual software. You imagine that actually having a big meeting like the SHOT Show or something or the NRA convention for software. And I don't think it lasted all that long, just a few years, but I went, I guess, two different years. The year we went in New Orleans in February of 84, uh, I looked it up. I, wasn't sure. I knew it was 84. I couldn't remember the month or anything, but I looked it up, and it was in uh, 84, February. 
and I remember they had one of these things uh, Apple did in their display and you know these kinds of conventions many of you've been at if you've not you know uh, when I say booth you know it's not really booth a booth is as big as my house you know and they had a Macintosh in there as as big as a small house almost you know <laughs> it was a huge uh, about a two-story Mac replica and and uh, hundreds of Macs and they had rooms of Macs you go in and use them and so that was a pretty cool time and I and, and the thing that's hard to imagine too if you're a younger person is this was really the first time I, this, that I'm aware of this was the first time because she had a mouse and that was it and it was the first time you you what I attracted me to it was the writing was black on white. It's like like we like to write, you know, it's black on white paper. Well, that's what the screen was. Up until this, you know, it was uh, that you see it in some of the old movies, the, the green on a black background, you know, or white on a black background, if you're talking IBM, and uh, the Mac Apple II was green on a, on a kind of a blackish background. And uh, if you're wondering why it's not on, it doesn't work, okay, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, so this was actually you know, like like you look at a page, a regular page, generally speaking. And but more importantly, you could change font size, you could draw, you could paint. This was the first time all of this was available, at least to the general public that I'm aware of. You know, Mac Paint. I still have the original disc here, Mac Write, Mac Paint. Now this thing's been in a barn, in the basement, and in everything for the last couple of decades, for the most part. But I still have the the manual for Mac Paint for MacWrite, that was the word processing program, and that's the, the manual for the computer. Okay, and I'm not trying to sell this because it's not for sale, but it uh, doesn't work anyway. The, the power supply went out uh, several years back. So there's the manual, if anybody's interested in learning how, and here's an old copy I found of Macworld, you know, that's 88, May of 88, still in the wrapper. So I, I used to buy Macworld and you know try to keep up with it, because again, I was kind of in that business for a few years. And uh, I was never a computer nerd. I was never a, a program or anything like that. I just liked firearms uh, like a Glock. You know, they were tools. They were tools. And still are. I've always used them just as a tool. I, that's, you know, they're wonderful tools. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, I came home from SoftCon in 84. And I started shopping for a computer, for a new one, for a Mac. And uh, I just, uh, I'd had a nice bonus that year from... Uh, from being such a great employee and being so successful. And I think that was a year, was that the year I bought? Now, one year I had a, a, a good, had mostly pretty good years every year I was doing that, but I, uh, with one bonus, I bought a computer and an Uzi. And that may have been the year, I don't know. It was either that or when I bought, I think it was when I bought the Mac. I bought a Mac and an Uzi that year, I think. Uh, either that or when I bought the, the first Apple. I don't know, lost track of it now, but actually I think it was this, because it was 84, I think, when I bought the, the Uzi. So anyway, still have the Mac, but not the Uzi, right? Uh, but it, it was expensive. Uh, it was uh, like 2,500 bucks, about that for the computer. And uh, I don't, I think that included this extra disk drive. I don't remember if I had to pay extra for that or not. I think I bought a printer at the time. I remember paying around $3,000, $3,200, something like that, which at the time was a lot. And uh, that's probably what, 6,000 now or something. At, uh, it was a lot, especially when you consider what this thing would do. <laughs> All it would do was basically, when it came out, there was very little software for it. Mac Write, Mac Paint was it. You know? and then, of course, lots of things were in development. And uh, the biggest problem was it was so slow. Now, here's something you can't relate to. I'm not going to put it in because it won't, it won't eject it. But if I put that in there, uh, that's how you would start this thing up. 128K, wow, of RAM. And it had no hard drive in it, see? There's no hard drive. <laughs> so this was it. The program was on here. And then uh, you'd punch it in there. And then go get you a cup of coffee, read the newspaper. And in about two or three minutes, it would finally be booted up. And you could start writing uh, or painting. Now, I don't know if I bought that or if that came with it. I bought it at the same time. But if you had the extra drive, it was uh, nice because you could put a blank disc in there and you could, what you're writing, you could save to that. And that worked out pretty well. Uh, but it was slow. Slow to save, slow, everything about it was slow. But, I mean, it would drive you crazy. If this thing did work and, and someone gave you one to work with, you would, yeah, it's like a Model T Ford. And it really is kind of the Model T Ford of the computer world. So a few years later, 
I bought a uh, hard drive. I did some research and I saw what other people were doing. I realized they were making a hard drive for it. It was external and it would sit on it. It was uh, about as big a footprint as the manual and uh, you could just set the computer on top of it. It's bigger than this, but about that thick. And it was, uh, what was that thing, 10 megs, John? Yeah, 10 meg hard drive. That was what was funny. And I, yeah, 10 megs. And I paid $1,000 for it. It was an Apple hard drive, 10 megs. I mean, you know, what's your phone got on it right now? You can buy flash drives, you know, with what, 62 gigs, you know? <laughs> but uh, it, was, uh, it was a big investment. But it made this thing run faster. It booted up a lot faster because the programs were actually on that hard drive. Imagine that. And so when you turned it on, it wasn't long before it was up and going. So then it became a pretty productive machine. It really did. And uh, it was pretty cool. And I bought a printer with it and everything, the tractor feed and all that. And that's what I used. I ran spreadsheets and uh, all when I was you know, with the, in the corporate world, every memo I wrote was on here. That's back in the days before email really got going. I mean, there was, a, there was some, some forms of that, but not much. And uh, I was on CompuServe, you know, but, uh, but there, there wasn't much out there until AOL came along and a few others. Uh, there was no internet really. That, that you know that we were using that came along in the 90s okay when people started using the internet and then when I came back to education I still had this thing and I'd been intensely involved in this stuff going to conventions and meetings and, and everything and, and helping with the development in the field I was in and I got back to education in 1990 and uh, you know we had a couple of computer labs nice computer labs but it was kind of frustrating because we'd start writing something and a kid, I can remember a kid, uh, Zan, I, you know, I remember him coming to me one day and say, uh, Mr. Higginbotham, uh, we were starting an essay or something. He said, can I start this at home on my computer? Because he probably at that time, I don't know what the percentages was, we used to do uh, uh, surveys and keep up with it, but, but uh, most people didn't have a computer in the house, even in 1990, 91, a lot did, but no, but I don't remember what the percentages were. A lot didn't. Okay, we had to take a laughing break for John. For some reason, he thought my real name was uh, humorous, and uh, you know, so we'll stick with Haycock, right? So anyway, the uh, the student uh, Zan, he came up to. We were starting an essay, and he uh, he comes up. And it's really funny because you know, he, he's like, um, Mr. Haycock, is it okay if I start start this at home on my computer? And I said, well, no, we're, we want to get started now on our, our draft, first draft, so I can help you with some different things, you know. And, uh, and I felt his pain because for the last 10 years, uh, everything I had written was on a computer. And, and well, even before that, on a typewriter, because I, that's, one of, that's what drew me to computers originally. Because I, I, my mother made me take typing in high school. I don't know why she wanted me to be a good secretary. I guess one day, at that time, that's before computers were in anybody's imagination of microcomputers. Uh, so I took it, and I remember that class well. I actually enjoyed it. Oh man, there were some hot gals uh, in that class sitting right there at my table. So I enjoyed the class, and I learned to type. And uh, like I said, I, I, I typed about 100 words a minute, and uh, it was something that I just. I don't know, I, I picked up with it and, and liked it. So that drew me to the computer. I remember being in Radio Shack one day, and I'll get back to where I was, thinking, how do these things work? You know, this was in like 1980 or 79 or something, and they had those, what, TRS-80s or something. Was, and uh, I said, and I saw it appear on the screen while I was typing. I said, so I can type on that screen and backspace and change my words or whatever I type on there, I can print out? I remember asking the guy that. And I know that sounds really stupid now, but at that time it wasn't. Uh, and he said, yeah, and he showed me. And uh, okay, that's launched me into looking for a computer, all right? So anyway, and I guess I was still teaching at that time, you know, so my first incarnation as a teacher. All right, so back to Zan. So Zan comes up and, and I could feel his pain because I got to where I didn't want to want to write things until I got to my computer. If I had a memo to write, just anything uh, that, that involved more than three words, I didn't want to get a yellow pad out and write all these pages because I could type it and edit and then print, you know, just like we all do now for the most part. And so anyway, uh, in that environment, uh, so I, I got to taking them to the lab as much as I could, but it was just, yeah, you know, it's awkward. You couldn't do it with every class and there'd be conflicts and all this sort of thing. And 
And so, uh, unfortunately, we had a headmaster where I was teaching that was really a new, uh, really open to technology. It wanted to do something dramatic. Uh, you know, laptops were showing up and every, at that time, 1990, 91, 90. This was actually 92, 93. And, uh, and so I said, hey, I'm your guy, let's do it. I'll be the guinea pig, and we did. And so uh, for the really the, the last 20 years I taught, 93 on up, I, uh, every one of my students had a laptop computer. All right, so, uh, I mean, that's just how we write. You know, it's how we think, isn't it? Yeah. So long story short on that, uh, it, it, I've been involved in these stupid things for so long. In those early days, I was really on the bleeding edge. It was a pain. I found myself lap linking computers that had problems with them. You know, the, the kids, 50 or 60 of them, and, and trying to keep them going. And it was with help from IBM people. It was, it was a colossal endeavor, put it that way. It's gotten a lot better now. The later years were almost trouble free. Uh, we had a nice computer department took care of all that and it evolved into something that was really cool but uh, but let me back up so yeah um, and again I, I've been intensely involved in the computer and you probably wouldn't even suspect that uh, because again I'm not a programmer I'm not a computer nerd really it's just that I found the very interesting tools from early on and have always just been involved with them and uh, found myself because of that involvement uh, teaching other people how to use them early on and we have new programs where I taught and I'd be involved in the training and just different things and it wasn't that I was a genius it just I knew a little bit more than other people which doesn't take much you know with a computer and especially in those days uh, but let's back up to uh, shopping for your first computer back in the early 80s you might be interested I, I meant to mention that what that was like because that's something that a lot of people even they were my age uh, you know, can't relate to probably because they were not shopping for a first computer. Like I said, I was a little different. Uh, the computer shop on that bag over there, that's where I bought, uh, I believe that's where I bought my Apple II, yeah, my Apple IIe and where I bought my Macintosh. That was a computer shop in Nashville and it had just a two or maybe three locations. I think it had two originally, well probably one originally, but Computer shops back then it was not like going to Best Buy, of course, buying online. There was no online, uh, and they were boutiques. They really, they were, they were really upscale places, uh, especially if you're looking for an Apple or an IBM PC when they came out in those early days of the, the early '80s, mid '80s. Uh, you'd go in there, and it'd be a night. In fact, I bought, uh, I guess, I bought the Mac. I don't remember. There was one downtown in a really nice place downtown Nashville. Uh, St. Cloud's Corner, I think, I believe you want to say. There was one uh, in Green Hills, which if you're familiar with Nashville at all, is a really nice, nice area of Nashville. And there was a computer shop there. So once I decided I was going to buy an Apple, there were just a few places to find one like that. And they were really nice places. You'd go in and there'd be like uh, one or two people working there. And there might just be one or two customers because not everybody was looking for computers. And they would take time and explain to you how they worked and how you hook up this printer and how, you know, it's just a totally different world. I was telling John, I couldn't really think of a good analogy for you, what it was like. Uh, a, a really good cigar shop is, is one thing that comes to mind. Think about the city or the town where you live. There's probably uh, maybe a, a, a nice cigar shop where you go buy hand rolled cigars and there's a humidor and it's there's probably just one or two or three maybe in your town or just one if you're in a smaller town or something so it's kind of like that i got to find the cigar shop if i was in charlotte north carolina or somewhere this afternoon i was looking for a cigar shop i could look and there'd be a couple i'm sure or bowling green kentucky there's probably one or two i don't know but it was that same way if i was looking for an apple computer it would be a boutique a small shop uh, really nice shop, uh, very educated people, not like going to, not a smash Best Buy or those kinds of places, but you know, you walk in, there's some, somebody in there that just started yesterday, don't know anything about the computers, but you know, you got a big lineup of them and 40 different kinds, you know, it's just a different world now. So it was kind of an interesting time and I've gone too long, but I, I wanted to show you this baby and because uh, this is it, this is the, the one I bought, it's not one like it, it's the one I bought in 84. Came back from SoftCon all excited. I tried it there, and uh, and decided I would I would take the plunge. Very slow, but uh, but it was it was pretty cool. And uh, then of course that led to a string of computers <laughs> since then. Um, I used it in my classroom. Uh, 
when I came back to teaching uh, for years, uh, there was programs you could use with grading and different things. So, and I'd roll. I remember I had this on a roller table. I'd roll into the closet and lock it up at night. And uh, it was so funny because soon after that, it became worth nothing essentially. And now it's worth a little bit as a collector's piece. But there for years and years, it was worth nothing. You know, it was in the barn, and, and uh, you know, and I would, I, but I would lock it up. And uh, kid, one thing I was going to tell you too, I brought it out. Stephen Jobs died, you know, a couple couple years ago. And when I saw that on the news, it put me on a on a on a hunt. And uh, and that that's probably him calling right now. Yeah, he's so. Yeah, Stephen, you up there? Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Okay, thank. He appreciated the fact that I brought this thing out and that I'm uh, displaying it, you know, for YouTube. So uh, anyway, uh, but anyway, when he passed, I saw that in the news and I cut out the article and his picture. And I thought, well, you know, my students might be interested in this. I, you know, there's this middle school. And so I went to the barn and dug this thing out of the loft, and wiped it off a little bit, and I took it to my classroom the next morning. And I set it on a table, set up just like this, in kind of the back of the room there. I had a really nice big classroom, high-tech classroom. Uh, and, uh, and set it up there, and, and it was really interesting to me that 13-year-olds, they, they started uh, messing with this thing, and they were fast fascinated by it. And to me, it didn't seem like it was all that long ago. But to them, it, it really is like a, I don't know, an artifact from the Dark Ages, I guess, but I, it didn't seem to me it had been that long, because I'd been using it right there, you know, like, what, 15 years before that, to run grades and everything else. But the kids, I'd find them back there all the time, it wouldn't even work. And they'd be messing with this mouse, that they found that fascinating, and this keyboard. They'd be back there typing on the keyboard all the time, and just looking it over. And so, that was interesting to me, and, uh, you know, more time had passed than I realized, I guess, and it, it, it looks different than, uh, it doesn't look all that different to me because I used it for so many years, but, but they were just fascinated by it. And, and again, this was the first one, and it was a 128K of memory, that's RAM, random access memory, but I upgraded it, you know, in the back, so I got a 512, I took it in and upgraded that baby to 512K, so it was a screaming machine, as you can imagine. <laughs> My phone that Steven just called me on, in fact, has what, about a million times, you know, the capability and, and memory is that old, that old Macintosh. So anyway, I've rambled too long, but that's one advantage of having the, the other channel. I can ramble even more if I want to, and so can John. And you know, this Mac, one reason we brought it out, uh, just to be silly, but also this, uh, this Glock, uh, you know, Glocks came around about the same time as that Macintosh. And, uh, it's kind of interesting the difference, isn't it? This thing is not much use today. That thing is, isn't it? Anyway, that's your lesson on uh, Macintosh uh, 128Ks, in case you're ever in the market for one. Life is good.